The phalanges form the skeleton of the digits. In horses, the only digit that has each extremity consists of three phalanges. The proximal phalanx, or long pastern, is long and lies between the third metacarpal and the middle phalanx. Its proximal extremity has an articulating surface that adapts to the third metacarpal trochlea. On its dorsal side, it has a slight elevation for the insertion of extensor tendons. The body of the proximal phalanx is elongated and thicker proximally than distally. The dorsal surface is smooth and convex, and the palmar surface is flattened and has a triangular and rough area called the triangle of the proximal phalanx. The head, or distal extremity, is formed by the articular surface for the middle phalanx, a surface formed by two condyles, separated by a sagittal groove of which the medial is slightly larger. The middle phalanx, or short pastern, is located between the proximal and distal phalanx. Its proximal surface is formed by articular cavities that adapt to the shape of the articular surface of the anterior phalanx. In its dorsal border, the common digital extensor tendon inserts. Its palmar edge is thick and through it passes the tendon of the deep digital flexor muscle. The body consists of a convex and smooth dorsal surface and a smooth but flattened palmar surface. The distal head or surface articulates with the distal phalanx and with the distal sesamoid bone. The distal phalanx, also called the coffin bone, resembles an obliquely truncated cone segment. In it, we can distinguish three surfaces, the parietal surface, the articular surface, and the surface of the sole. The parietal surface is convex and lies against the dermis that joins it to the inner surface of the hoof wall. It thins cordially to form the palmar, medial, and lateral processes, each of which divide into two by the presence of grooves or recesses. The surface of the sole is the palmar surface. It has a slightly concave shape. It shows a semilunar line for the insertion of the deep digital flexor muscle, which separates the cutaneous plane from the flexor surface. There is a solar groove on each side of the flexor surface that penetrate into the bone through the corresponding solar foramen and form the solar channel in its interior. This channel surrounds the terminal arch formed by the union of the digital, medial and lateral vessels. The articular surface looks proximally and is similar to the proximal articular surface of the second phalanx. It consists of two hollows separated by a ridge. However, the palmar edge of this surface extends to form a small joint surface for the distal sesamoid bone. The dorsal edge of this surface rises to form at its confluence with the parietal face, the extensor process, the highest point of the bone, where the tendon of the common digital extensor muscle is inserted. The surfaces are separated by edges the coronary border, which is proximal, separates the parietal surface from the articular surface. The edge of the sole, which is distal, limits the parietal surface and the surface of the sole in its dorsal half. It presents a shallow notch called the crena. In the union of the middle and distal phalanges on the palmar surface is the distal or navicular sesamoid bone. This is an elongated bone that articulates with the two phalanges. In addition to the corresponding joint surfaces, the navicular bone consists of a flexor surface, where the tendon of the deep digital flexor muscle attaches. The ruminants have two digits, the third and the fourth, complete and of considerable size. Therefore, in each limb, there are two proximal phalanges, two middle phalanges and two distal phalanges, four proximal sesamoids and two distal phalanges. In these animals, the proximal phalanx is shorter, narrower and more quadrangular than in equines. Its joint surface is concave and is divided in two by the presence of a groove. The articular surface of the distal extremity is convex and is also divided. 
the middle phalanx is shorter than the proximal phalanx. Its proximal joint surface adapts to the shape of the corresponding one of the first phalanx, and the distal phalanx is also divided into two parts by a sagittal groove. Finally, the distal phalanx resembles the shape of half of the third phalanx of an equine, presenting an excavated axial face and a convex abaxial face.